I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. Our cross will carry till we see Jesus. <laughs> no turning back. No turning back. The world behind us, <clears throat> the cross before us. The world behind us, the cross before us. The world get behind us, the cross goes before us. No turning back, no turning back. Oh, no turning back. Not today, not tomorrow, not as long as we live. We will carry on and we will walk on, right? And so we welcome you. I welcome you today to the reading of the Word of God on this February 15. February 15. <clears throat> today we will finish Exodus, Shemot, and tomorrow, Lord willing, that we're here, we will begin the fabulous book of Leviticus. Oh, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Bring your Bible. Get your coffee or your tea or orange juice, whatever you drink in the morning. And come, come, y'all, and let's read it together. Let's have fellowship together. And I welcome each and every one of these dear friends. Exodus chapter 39, 39. Of the blue, purple, and scarlet thread, they, Bezalel and Aholabah, made garments of ministry for ministering in the holy place and made the holy garments for Aaron, as the Lord had commanded Moses, Moshe. He made the ephod of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and a fine woven linen, and they beat the gold into thin sheets. Oh, I would love to see that. I'll bet I, I'll bet there's a video we could go to, right? They beat the gold into thin sheets and cut it into threads, into threads to work it in with the blue, purple, and scarlet thread and the fine linen into artistic designs. They made shoulder straps for it to couple it together. It was coupled together at its two edges and the intricately woven band of his ephod was on it, was of the same workmanship, woven of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread and of fine woven linen as the Lord had commanded Moses. And they set onyx stones enclosed in settings of gold. They were engraved as signets are engraved with the names of the sons of Israel. He put them on the shoulders of the ephod as memorial stones for the sons of Israel as the Lord had commanded Moshe, Moses. And he made the breastplate artistically woven like the workmanship of the ephod of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread and of fine woven linen. They made the breastplate square by doubling it 
A span was its length and a span its width when doubled. And they set in it four rows of stones, a row with a sardius, a topaz, and an emerald was the first row. The second row, a turquoise, a sapphire, and a diamond. The third row, a jacinth, an agate, and an amethyst. The fourth row, a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. They were enclosed in settings of gold in their mountings. There were 12 stones, according to the names of the sons of Israel, according to their names, engraved like a signet, each one with its own name according to the 12 tribes. And they made chains for the breastplate at the ends, like braided cords of pure gold. They also made two settings of gold and two gold rings and put the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. And they put the two braided chains of gold in the two rings on the ends of the breastplate. The two ends of the two braided chains they fastened in the two settings and they put them on the shoulder straps of the ephod in the front. And they made two rings of gold and put them on the two ends of the breastplate on the edge of it, which was on the inward side of the ephod. They made two other gold rings and put them on the two shoulder straps underneath the ephod toward its front, right at the seam above the intricately woven band of the ephod. <clears throat> and they bound the breastplate by means of its rings to the rings of the ephod with a blue cord so that it would be above the intricately woven band of the ephod and that the breastplate would not come loose from the ephod as the Lord had commanded Moshe. He made the robe of the ephod of woven work, all of blue. And there was an opening in the middle of the robe, like the opening in a coat of mail, with a woven binding all around the opening so that it would not tear. They made on the hem of the robe pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet, and of fine woven linen, and they made bells of pure gold and put the bells between the pomegranates on the hem of the robe all around between the pomegranates, a bell, and a pomegranate, a bell, a pomegranate, all around the hem of the robe to minister in, as the Lord had commanded Moses, Moshe. They made tunics artistically woven of fine linen for Aaron and his sons, a turban of fine linen, exquisite hats of fine linen, short trousers of fine woven linen and a sash of fine woven linen with blue, purple, and scarlet thread made by a weaver as the Lord had commanded Moses. And we know that linen was chosen because it breathes and you don't sweat. That, that was one of the Lord's uh, points of creating all of these garments. No sweating. And then they made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold and wrote on it an inscription like the engraving of a signet. And the inscription was holiness to the Lord. And they tied it to it a blue cord to fasten it above the turban, as the Lord had commanded Moses. Thus, all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting was finished. Hallelujah. And the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord had commanded Moses, 
So they did. And they brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent and all its furnishings, its clasps, its boards, its, its bars, its pillars, and its sockets, the covering of ram skins dyed red, the covering of badger skins, and the veil of the covering, the ark of the testimony with its poles and the mercy seat, the table, all its utensils, and the showbread, the pure gold lampstand with its lamps, the lamps set in order, all its utensils, and the oil for light, the gold altar, the anointing oil, and the sweet incense, the screen for the tabernacle door, the bronze altar, <clears throat> its grate of bronze, its poles, and all its utensils, and the laver with its base, the hangings of the court, its pillars and its sockets, the screen for the court gate, its cords and its pegs, all the utensils for the service of the tabernacle, for the tent of meeting, and the garments of ministry to minister in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest and his son's garments to minister as priests. According to all that the Lord had commanded Moshe, so the children of Israel did all the work. And oh my goodness, <clears throat> aren't you glad to hear of all this obedience? after he called them stiff-necked. So many times they turned from him, made other gods, all of that that we have read. Here we are reading, they did all the work. And then Moses looked over all the work, and indeed they had done it. As the Lord had commanded, just so they had done it. And Moses blessed them. Oh, don't you, don't you just think how thrilled and grateful he was to be able to bless them and say, you did it. You did what you were supposed to do. And we move right along to chapter 40. So then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, on the first day of the first month, you shall set up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You shall put in it the ark of the testimony, and partition off the ark with the veil. You shall bring in the table and arrange the things that are to be set in order on it, and you shall bring in the lampstand and light its lamps. You shall also set the altar of gold for the incense before the ark of the testimony, and put up the screen for the door of the tabernacle. And then you shall set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. And you shall set the laver between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar and put water in it. Oh, these are detailed instructions. And please go to Kathy's graphics. Uh, she has found wonderful graphics to display for you as closely as we know, right? As closely as we know. All of these articles and the tabernacle. And you shall set the laver between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar and put water in it. You shall set up the court all around and hang up the screen at the court gate and you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it. And you shall hallow it and all its utensils and it shall be holy. There is the final important ingredient, holiness. You shall anoint the altar of the burnt offering and all its utensils and consecrate the altar. The altar 
shall be most holy, and you shall anoint the laver and its base and consecrate it, and then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the door of the tabernacle of meeting and wash them with water. You shall put the holy garments on Aaron and anoint him and consecrate him that he may minister to me as priest. And you shall bring his sons and clothe them with tunics. You shall anoint them as you anointed their father, that they may minister to me as priests. For their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. How about that? All that they did was to be passed on generation after generation. Thus Moses did, according to all that the Lord had commanded him, <clears throat> so he did. And it came to pass in the first month of the second year, a year has gone by, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was raised up. So Moshe raised up the tabernacle, fastened its sockets, set up its boards, put in its bars, and raised up its pillars. And he spread out the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent on top of it, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He took the testimony and put it into the ark, inserted the poles through the rings of the ark, and put the mercy seat on top of the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle, hung up the veil of the covering, and partitioned off the ark of the testimony, as the Lord had commanded Moshe, Moses, <clears throat> he put the table in the tabernacle of meeting on the north side of the tabernacle outside the veil. And he set the bread in order upon it before the Lord, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the lampstand in the tabernacle of meeting across from the table on the south side of the tabernacle, and he lit the lamps before the Lord, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the gold altar in the tabernacle of meeting in front of the veil, and he burned sweet incense on it. As the Lord had commanded Moses, he hung up the screen at the door of the tabernacle, and he put the altar of burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting and offered upon it the burnt offering and the grain offering. As the Lord had commanded Moses, he set the laver between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar, and he put water there for washing. And Moses, Aaron, and his sons, would wash their hands and their feet with water from it. Whenever they went into the tabernacle of meeting and when they came near the altar, they washed as the Lord had commanded Moses. And he raised up the court all around the tabernacle and the altar and hung up the screen of the court gate so, and here, oh, we have come to this grand and glorious sentence. So Moses finished the work. And then, <laughs> then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moshe was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting because the cloud rested above it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. 
Can you imagine even a little bit the reaction of the people and Moses? Whoa. Whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, the children of Israel would go onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not journey till the day that it was taken up. Now here is the Lord entering the scene big time again, isn't he? And making himself well known because it is his hand that's going to cause the cloud to stay or move. For the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day, and fire was over it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And that's the end of the book. How about that? <clears throat> Tomorrow we will begin Leviticus. We move right along now and begin another New Testament book, the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 1. <clears throat> the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, <coughs> Pardon me, one moment. <coughs> Behold. I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Hallelujah. <clears throat> that is from Malachi, 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 chapter 3, verse 1. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 1. John <clears throat> came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him, <clears throat> and they were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist. And he ate locusts and wild honey. <clears throat> and he preached, saying, There comes one, capital O on one, so we know who this is. There comes one after me who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. I indeed baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb. <clears throat> Perhaps the greatest day of my life. Receiving Jesus and being baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence that I was. The evidence, we all need the evidence of speaking in tongues. Oh yes, he will give you a brand new language, your own language. And how do you get all that? <clears throat> you humble yourself and believe and you receive by faith. You receive by faith, by asking. Please do. Please do. Do not miss this incredible infilling of the Holy Spirit and this new prayer language. When you don't know what to pray for, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit prays in his language through you. 
and you will see results. It came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and he was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately, coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. And then a voice, a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Oh my goodness. That's what we want to hear, don't we? From our father that he is well pleased with us. Immediately, the Spirit drove him into the wilderness, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beasts. Can you imagine that? He was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. Now, after John the Baptist was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. That's the same message that we received. That's the same message that we are here to put out there and share from God's word. Repent. Confess your sins to the Lord. You know them. You stop and think about it. You know. I knew. And you can always conclude that simple prayer of confession of your sins and asking Jesus to forgive you and to come into your heart and to be Lord over your life. You can do that. You can do that now. <clears throat> you can do that when they finish reading. But I so encourage you not to put it off. Don't put it off another day. Do you see what's going on in the world? We don't know from day to day. And we do not know the day Jesus is coming. So let's do it today. All that we can do. Repent. Tell him you're sorry. Ask him to cover you with his blood and forgive you. And then just flat out, by faith, believe. Just believe this gospel. And as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon, we would say Simon, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, <clears throat> for they were fishermen. And then Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Immediately. The calling fell on them. And they knew. And they obeyed. They obeyed. And when he had gone a little farther from there, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the boat mending their nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants, and they went after him. And then they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught and they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, 
and not as the scribes. <clears throat> now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And that came from an unclean spirit. And notice it's plural. Have you come to destroy us? But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. <clears throat> this should be every Sunday. This is the ministry. Jesus is performing the ministry. And then they were all amazed so that they questioned among themselves saying, what is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority, he commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread throughout all the region around Galilee. So now, the ministry is launched. And that's who you and I are. We are children of the Most High God. And now it's our time to be working these works. Let's be very aware of people and their condition when we're around them. And let's see what kind of ministry we can do. Please, I'm so happy to be reminding myself. All right, we move right along to Psalm 35. Psalm 35, another Psalm of David. And uh, <clears throat> I like, I wrote down here that, that for me, for me, Maybe for you too. This psalm is a proclamation over the United States of America. That's what it is for me. As well as just God's word for everybody. For every nation and every person. Plead my cause, O Lord, with those who strive with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Also draw out the spear and stop those who pursue me. David cries, say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those be put to shame and brought to dishonor who seek after my life. Let those be turned back and brought to confusion who plot my hurt. Let them be like chaff before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. <laughs> Amen. Let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of the Lord Pursue them, <clears throat> for without cause they have hidden their net for me in a pit, which they have dug without cause for my life. Let destruction come upon him unexpectedly, and let his net that he has hidden catch himself. Into that very destruction, let him fall. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, 
who is like you? <clears throat> Delivering the poor from him who is too strong for him. Yes, the poor and the needy from him who plunders him. Fierce witnesses rise up. They ask me things that I do not know. They reward me evil for good to the sorrow of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled myself with fasting and my prayer would return to my own heart. I paced about as though he were my friend or brother. <clears throat> I bowed down heavily as one who mourns for his mother. But in my adversity, they rejoiced and gathered together. Attackers gathered against me, and I did not know it. They tore at me and did not cease with ungodly mockers at feasts they gnashed at me with their teeth wow <clears throat> david went through some very turbulent days didn't he wondering if he was even going to live through it <clears throat> and out of that came his intense love and service of every last minute of his life. <clears throat> I have prayed that prayer over President Trump also. All right, we wrap up today with Proverbs chapter 9, verses 11 and 12. Proverbs chapter 9, 11 and 12. We're still talking about wisdom, okay? For by me, wisdom... Your days will be multiplied, and years of life will be added to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. And if you scoff, you will bear it alone. Isn't that true? <clears throat> People don't want to hear somebody who's just going to complain and scoff. They kind of leave early <laughs> their presence and go on their way. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's bow our heads and really pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your wonderful word. We just bless you for it, Lord. It is the power that we need and that we want in our walk of life. Your word. It leaps off the page at us, Lord. There's no other book to be read that does what the word of God does for us because it's you. It's your word, precious Father, wonderful Savior Jesus, blessed, blessed friend and comforter, Holy Spirit. Oh, you've done it all. You've given us all. You are our reason for living. You are what our life is for. It's what we are about. Building up the kingdom of God. Sharing and testifying to people. Lord, help us. Holy Spirit, help us to do that. Help us to find someone today <clears throat> to mention Jesus to or to ask them if there's something that we could pray about for them. People are wanting that a whole lot more than we realize. So Holy Spirit, please guide us today. Show us. Show us the path we should go. Show us the people we should touch whether it's really actively by a phone call or a visit or send a card or a little letter, what, whatever. Father, help us to be obedient today. 
We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Lord. We pray for her peace as the enemies of, of Jerusalem, as the demonic forces from Satan try so hard, so hard to create problems, grief, stress, confusion, fear. Lord, please let your Holy Spirit, Rurak HaKodesh, let Holy Spirit move all about Jerusalem, bringing peace, bringing peace in every corner, every place. Precious Lord, please, please, a huge convention there with people from all over the world. More and more, Lord, we know you will draw the focus unto Jerusalem as you prepare for your son to burst through those clouds and sky and come back to rule and reign on this earth. Precious Lord, we just ask for peace in the turbulent time. We pray, Lord, for the Knesset Lord, give them wisdom today. I pray, Lord, for Bibi Netanyahu. Give him wisdom. Please, Lord, even increase the anointing upon him. The great leadership you have put his life through to come now to this day and age when he is so important to Israel and to America and to the world. Put angels all around him, Lord. Angels all around him. Protect him and direct his feet and direct his mouth. Show him where to go and where not to go. Who to contact and talk with, who not to. Precious Lord, we'd ask that you would Protect your people from all of the enemies on every side. Father, I hold up America to you. And I praise God that you are revealing secrets. You are revealing plots and plans and deals and all kinds of things. You are bringing truth to the surface. And that's what we as Americans want, Lord. We want truth. We, we are asking you to come and to guide us and to show us and to help us, Lord. Be very, very active in your ministry. Let us have a hunger and a thirst, Lord, for lost souls, lost people, wandering around, wondering what to do. Precious Lord, Cause us to walk in your authority in America and in all the countries of the earth, all the other people from other countries. If you are here and you are reading with us and praying with us, then we hold you up in prayer <clears throat> and we ask Father God to anoint you for where you live, to increase the body of Christ, by speaking the gospel, praying with people, and leading them to you, that they might be assured of going to heaven and not hell. We thank you for that, Lord. We'd ask that you'd put righteous people, Lord, in all of the offices of our land, righteous people who love you, who obey you, who want to do your will, who see with spiritual eyes and hear with spiritual ears what is really happening, what is really going on. And Lord, <clears throat> let us take very seriously this calling. I'd ask you to bless the prayers of all of your, your sons and daughters who are here and draw us together, Lord. We thank you for this little fellowship that we have together, it's beautiful. And Lord, we'd ask that you would cause us to share it 
everywhere that people would fall in love with you and with your word. And all of God's people went ahead with your own prayers, your own prayers, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Love you all so much. Have a great day.